He knew it. But who is in control? The Lord. Who is in charge? The Lord. Whose word is always fulfilled? The Lord's. No one else's. Not the Pope. Not the Cardinal. Not the Bishop. No one. It's the Lord. Not the President. Not the King. Not the Prime Minister. It's the Lord's. It's the Lord's. So they had to go to Egypt. Thank you, Herod, for running, coming after us. Because there's a prophecy, I have to go to Egypt. And my mom is not going to go to Egypt, so I'm going to make my mom go to Egypt through Herod. Because I have, I have some work to do in Egypt. Ah, in, in the book of Isaiah, about 750, 800 years written 700 to 800 years before the birth of Christ. The book of Isaiah was written between 750 to 800 BC before Christ. In the book of Isaiah, the Lord God is speaking through the prophet Isaiah and says, in the heart of Egypt, I will place my altar. Wow. In the heart of Egypt, I will build or place my altar. So that prophecy also has to be fulfilled. That's why Jesus Christ of Nazareth had to go to Egypt. And you look at Egypt today. The altar of the Lord is placed in the heart of Egypt. The Coptics, our beloved Coptics, are the original pharaohs. The Arabs, the Muslims came later on. They only came the other day. The natives of Egypt are the Coptics, not the Muslim Arabs. That is history. Just like the Aborigines are the natives of Australia and this history cannot be wiped, cannot be denied. So as the Pharaohs, the Coptics are the natives of Egypt. What was the king, the Pharaoh? What did he put on his head as a crown? It was a crown with a cobra on it, snake. What does the snake represent biblically speaking? Satan, Satan. So on the head of Pharaoh, whose head was it? Satan, meaning Satan was ruling over Pharaoh. Today, over the Coptic's head is the cross, the Lamb of God. See the Lord. Poor King Herod, he thought he was doing as he pleased. He didn't realize God was moving him and controlling him and making him do whatever God wanted. So what is the message for all of us? Whatever you are going through now, whatever you went through before, and whatever you are going to go through later on, remember, God is in control. Can you trust Him? You need to be awake. You can't trust him being asleep, can you? Whatever you've gone through, whatever you are going through now, and whatever you will go through later on, remember, God is in control. Someone might come and say, Bishop, I've been dealing with this person in my life for the last 20 years. And they have been nothing but a pain in my life for 20 years on end. And I begged the Lord Jesus to, gay, to, give, to do something. Either change them or remove them entirely from my life. Because it got to a stage I cannot handle this. Well, let me answer you, my son, my daughter. Please remember this. And please focus on this. Maybe. That person whom you are whinging about is the very reason that you are still close to the Lord Jesus.
today. <laughs> Have you thought about it? You see, if this person hadn't given me hell 20 years, I wouldn't have been close to the Lord now. It is this person that through that pain, I received humility. You know, while we are in that cyclone, we lose sense of direction. But when you come out of that cyclone and everything is clear, you'll realize, wow, I thought I was lost, but it's all good. See, while you are suffering, you've been praying, but the focus has been on the suffering, not on the prayer, as far as you're concerned. But if you count the number of prayers you said throughout those 20 years, there was no way in the world you were going to pray that much if you had a, a, a very peaceful life. Mm? Isn't it, Bishop? When you are healthy, do you pray as hard as when you're sick? Huh? I went to the doctor and the naughty doctor said to me, you have three weeks to live. Listen, doctor, you better check those x-rays one more time and you better redo those blood tests because you could be mistaken. I don't want to die. So you'll start knocking at every single church's door in Sydney, in, Mel in all of Australia. You will call upon every saint. You will call upon the name of the Lord a million, zillion, trillion, zillion, billion, zillion times. You will never cease praying. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I'm still young. I haven't seen Bondi Beach yet. I want to go to Kuji. I chop you. I haven't explored life yet. Lord, please, I'll do anything for you. You pray and you pray and you pray and you pray. Imagine if you were healthy. Would you do the same? Never, never. <laughs> so the Lord knows you. And he says, if I let you be comfortable, I'll lose you. So what I'm going to do, I'll allow. It's not that I wanted it to be this way. But if I let you to be on your own, I would have lost you. So therefore, you left me no choice but to put someone who is going to be a pain in your life for 20 years because this pain in the neck is going to bring you to me. So was it the Lord not doing anything? No. Was it this person being a pain in your life? No. It was the Lord's doing for your own salvation. So Herod was a good boy. He was doing his job. But you see, at the time, Herod is ugly. Herod is an evildoer. Look at him. He's trying to kill us. He's trying to destroy us. He's sending his army after us wherever we go, from one town to the other, from one city to the other one, from one country to the other. Herod is not letting go. Until when, Lord? But you see, you need to come back and trust in the Lord. Let him work in you the way he sees it fit and good for you because the Lord is known never to fail and whatever the Lord starts he will make sure he ends it when the Lord begins the journey with you don't ever think he will leave you halfway through it the Lord is known to finish the race you need to trust in him the race is the Lord's, not yours. All you need to do is cling on to him and say, Lord, take me with you. When you trust in the Lord, he will not leave you on the wayside. He will not leave you halfway through. He will make sure you finish the race. And that's what St. Paul says. I have finished a good race. Wow. Well done, St. Paul. See, I trust in the Lord. He made me through. He made me through it all. So whatever is happening in your life, whatever currents 
are hitting against you. Trust in the Lord. He knows everything. He knows everyone. He knows what is happening, what will happen. He knows it all. Leave it in the hands of the one who is capable of everything. Capable. So when someone came and kicked me out of the church, so be it. And when someone came and brought me back into the church, so be it. Both of them are a secondary thing. They don't mean anything whether I get kicked out or brought back. What matters, did I trust in the Lord in both ways? When I was kicked out and when I was brought back, was my focus on the Lord? or on others or me I need to focus on the Lord on the Lord you're sick <laughs> hallelujah I came out of the doctor's surgery and he said you got three weeks to go Bishop Murray thank you Lord I'm happy whether I live or die this is my sweetheart this ain't going to change baby this is not gonna change whether I live or die Jesus is the love of my life that is not going to change as a Christian you better believe in this way and don't ever have it any other way Thank the Lord for everything, the goods and the bads, the light and the darkness, the teas and the joys and the laughters. Thank Him for all. Thank Him. And don't dwell on the past. Look at the past. Learn from the past because that's the only place you can ever learn. The present, you are still living it. You cannot learn from the present. The future, you haven't lived it yet. You cannot learn from it. The only place you can learn from is the past because you've lived it and it's gone. So when you look at the past, don't dwell on the past. Don't live the past. You cannot. You can do only one thing with the past. Learn from the goods and the bads of the past. To make a better future in the present moment. But thank the Lord. So my beloveds, whatever is happening in your life, you've got marital issues, thank the Lord, leave it in his capable hands. Do your best. I'm not saying don't do anything, no. You see, you need to do something about it, but trusting the Lord, having faith in the Lord, being built on the rock, leaving everything in his capable hands and moving forward, say, Lord, Let's go and talk to my wife because you're the only one that can break her head. <laughs> or, Lord, come with me because you're the only one who can smash this hubby of mine. I've been telling him, don't go to pokies. For 20 years, stop playing the pokies. He keeps on going, not listening to me. Lord, next time he is playing the pokey, put his head through that poker machine and make the, make the monkeys go is it the jackpot <laughs> put everything in the Lord's capable hands trust the Lord oh when the Lord does it his way my goodness amazing no mind can ever think of it you would never ever would have imagined the way the Lord put it all together. Beyond, beyond any intellect and every intellect. This is God, the only true divine God. There is none like him. He is the only infinite, perfect God, creator of everything and everyone, visible and invisible. God is beyond your imagination. But he is the truth. Oh, Jesus is beautiful. Man, I love this man. 
I'm a sinner, yes. I'm a very weak instrument, yes. But I adore him. He knows that. That's why I'm saying it because he knows I'm not lying. Otherwise, I wouldn't have dared to say it because I would be lying. But he knows I love him to death. Be strong. Whether people go against you, whether situations go against you, whether dark tunnels come your way, whether big tidal waves trying to smack you and smash you, whatever is happening in your life, let God be in charge of everything, including you. Let him be in charge. Now what happened? King Herod, with all his might, with all his authority, with all his sovereignty, with all his power, tried to kill a little baby. He died and the baby is still living. <laughs> it's very funny when all this mighty king could not overcome a little baby so hopeless and useless. Wow. Very funny, king. You couldn't win with a little baby. Mm -hmm. In Assyrian, we say, ash on your head. You see, the world, with all its might and power, the people of the world, at the end, when they try to go against the true divine God, they end up acting childishly, foolishly. All this power and might, they couldn't do anything. Oh, they, they brought the corona. <laughs> oh, and they might bring something else. Don't ever believe in none of this nonsense. They can jab you, pray and ask the Lord to change it into water and it will. But don't ever say that was a vaccine. That was never a vaccine. If you say it was a vaccine, it will poison you. But if you say, I was forced, Lord, whether I was weak, whether I was fragile, I was put in a situation bigger than me, please forgive me, Lord, and change this poison into water, the Lord will. But that is never a vaccine. Never. That was an evil act, period. But you see, when you trust in the Lord, He will deliver you from the snares of the enemy. And even if you step on snakes and drink the poison of the snake, nothing will harm you. Nothing. But when you have the Lord, the Lord will also give you at the right time the courage to stand and speak the truth. Everything is the Lord. Me standing here and speaking, it's the Lord. You sitting in the church today, it's the Lord. Celebrating the Holy Mass service, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. Why are you here and not elsewhere? It's the Lord. There are two words you need to scrape them from your Christian index, luck, coincidence. Don't ever use these two words ever as a true believer in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is no luck, no coincidence in Christianity, period. Get rid of it. Don't ever say, oh, what a luck. Oh, that was a coincidence. Doesn't exist. Everything is planned by Jesus Christ of Nazareth because he is God. So you being here was planned by the Lord Jesus. Maybe somebody called you. Maybe this good looking face you saw on YouTube or TikTok or Wikwok or Wikmok and you came here. It is not. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. Everything is the Lord. Trust the Lord in everything. Even if it looks 
the end to you. It's not the end until the Lord Jesus says it is. Believe you, me, but believe in the Lord. So many times I've said it's the end for me. The Lord didn't say that. So he overrides whatever I say. Because I've asked him, even through my weakness, I say no more. I ask you, Lord, ignore my weakness and override it. He does. And sometimes he does it even if 